this session is about Evernote is because though the LiveScribe pen program seems to be all about these really cool recording pens, I think Evernote may be the most powerful part of the deal. I was trying to get Nick Provenzio, who is like some quasi-internet famous uh, teacher who is a LiveScribe, no, an Evernote education ambassador. I was trying to get him to Skype in, but he's like, you know what time that is in Michigan? I want to be home. I'm like, okay. So I, I instead talked to him a lot this weekend and ran through the most important parts of Evernote. I put this together. It's not too long. Hopefully it won't be too painful. Oh, hold on. So when I first open Evernote, and I'm using the app here in uh, on the Mac, you can see my name is News Poet because I set this up beforehand, and it's my old account. Um, there are a number of different controls here I want to go over pretty quickly. As we look at this screen. Working across the top, we've got the username, we've got the sync button. If you're not sure if your notes are as synced as they could be, you can click there. We've got the notifications thing. If you share something with people and they pick it up, it'll show up there. This is the quick note button that allows you to add a new note to any one of your notebooks. Um, on that sync button, something that's important, when you load something into Evernote, it will not respond to search until you've synced it. Like, I put a couple PDFs in there, and they are not searchable until they're synced. Once they're synced, those PDFs, the text in them is searchable. Even the text visible in pictures becomes searchable once it's synced. They're hooking up to like the CIA or something on the other end. You can see there, and then you've got the search notes. Now the search notes will actually, because we're working in a premium account here, this will search all of your handwritten text for a keyword. Um, working down the left hand side, we've got a shortcuts area, so if this evidence collection sheet was really important, I could pull it into shortcuts, bang, there it would be. We've got recent notes, just a little navigational tool. We've got the uh, notes section, which we're on now. If we click notebooks, this is when they were most recently updated. Let's stack them by owner or by name. These are the notebooks that are in my Evernote account. You'll see this first one, English Notes, has this tab here, which lets me know that I've shared it with people. Let's see what that looks like. So this is shared with all of these users. Now, one of the really important things I learned in the process of setting this up is that their email addresses need to be separated only by a comma. So this has to be a CSV list of emails. And I have an almost right one of those for the freshman made already in a folder that I can invite any of you to. Uh, there's like three kids whose emails aren't on there because their school emails aren't associated with their Evernote account. So you'll have to ask them, what is that? But um, this was incredibly frustrating until I chased it down. Like I just took my Outlook list and tried to paste it into the Evernote and it did not like that at all. I had to drop it into Word, I had to strip out all of their names, I had to strip out all of the characters, I had to take, and then I remembered I could do a find and replace, so I did a find and replace on a semicolon to a comma, but um, when you're setting up a folder to share with anyone, if you're putting in a bunch of users, their email addresses can only be separated by commas. Um, who happen to be the freshman. So this is my common folder. We'll talk later about setting up a common notebook rather than not a folder and notebook. And the difference between save, inviting these individuals to modify and invite or creating a public link. Um, in addition, the other thing we'll talk about today is we'll talk about tags, how they're useful, how they work, um, 
and that's pretty much it. The other functions here, if you travel a lot, this could be very useful to tell you where you made certain notes. Eleven of these were made in the U.S. Um, and there's other functionality that's located that is accessible through the different apps offered with Evernote, but I don't really know much about that right now. So that's going to conclude the initial walkthrough. Thanks. Um, just generic navigational questions before we actually talk about what this can do. Yes. Do you know if it's dramatically different on a PC? Okay. It is not dramatically different. Okay. Like there's, Evernote has, a, as far as I can tell, about 2,500 different platforms, and they're all relatively similar. Okay. The one thing I noticed was that when I was logged in on my iPad, I couldn't tell which notebooks were shared until I went to share them and then saw the list. Like that shared notebook icon wasn't there. So I expect there's going to be small differences like that between them. Um, so let me close this. Do teachers have premium accounts? Yes. Teachers have premium accounts. If you haven't set that up yet, I have a code for you. If you weren't in the room and set it up with us. Yeah. Um, and then premium accounts are very important because it's by that mechanism that you can actually share folders. Okay. Not to mention, you know, it makes you um, so I wanted to kind of, we can, we can take this discussion anywhere you guys have questions, but I wanted to kind of walk you through what uh, Mr. Provenzio has talked about in how he uses Evernote. He has a class set of iPads, so all the kids have access to this stuff all the time, and he runs his entire uh, sophomore, freshman and sophomore English classes off of the Evernote account. So. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, are you going to teach the students like formally how to use Evernote, or um, should we be doing that in our classroom? Just because when they say things like, "Or oh, you can share it with me on Evernote," with, like email it from Evernote, they're like, "We don't know how to use Evernote." So I have just set up a common notebook file with them. And I didn't require them to do anything with it, but I did put like all the resources they need to write the paper there. And um, they were like, well, I don't have all of those notes. I'm like, well, does anyone? They're like, well, yeah. Huh, where are they? Um, so I'm, I'm getting them to use it. And yeah, you know, we'll just keep working through it. What I would recommend doing is like saying, okay, for this, I need you to do this and this. Um, you know, just make them do it once or twice. and. Really, it all begins with setting up that common space. So the I'm going to invite you to this folder called LiveScribe Pilot something or other, Pilot Teachers Group, right? Which I have one note in. Is it just one note? Yeah, I guess it is. Um, no, it's not. So one of the things that Nick had said is when he Put, when he's using it to organize his own material, each note is a unit. And I would have assumed each note was an assignment. But he says, no, he runs each note as a unit. So if his class has like four units, there's going to be four main notes that, are he, that he's using. And this is taking advantage of the fact that the notes are of indefinite length. So in this note, last night, I was just like, OK, let's put enough together here that we can see what it looks like, right? So, um, and this isn't something, like, as it is, I would not share this with my students. I'll show you later something I have shared with the students. Um, so here's just a picture I dropped in. I'm pretty sure if I search Caesar, it'll actually pick it up out of this picture, too. Um, then this is a PDF. So the PDF drops in and is completely readable in that format. You can see the quizzes which are doc and docx format, are not readable. Um, I think you can see them under quick look. Yeah. 
the smart notebook notebook file, yeah, not so much. Right, so there's a limit to the compatibility. But this was the only one of the files that, at, that was actually in my work that I could find that didn't work. Um, and then, this is so cool. You can also just um, record some sound into here too because you're like, hey, don't forget about the really important thing that you can't write that one. You sounded so downstate there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. <coughs> That was weird. Yeah, and it, it, it really was so kind of yeah, it really was. <laughs> well, you know, don't don't you know if you can't finish your diet coke, just pour the zodi out the sink, right? Oh uh, what? Sorry, having an <laughs> Illinois moment, and we'll stop now. Um, but he just kind of drops the documents and any notation he needs to do in on the fly. And when I say drop, it actually is because it's kind of a, if you can see it in your file menu and grab it, you can pull it over and hover above Evernote with it and let go of it and it adds itself to that notebook. Yeah. So when you say note, you will mean the same thing as a notebook? Um, well, it depends on what's open. Like if you've just got a note open, mm -hmm. it'll drop it into that note. If you take a file and drop it on top of a closed notebook, it'll make a new note in that notebook. And include that oh, file in it. Okay, so he's got one notebook that's called like freshman English, and within right. there are four notes or many units there are, and within that note he might have all the files associated with Caesar or Odyssey right. or whatever you're reading. Okay. Exactly. Um, and then he said, and I didn't hear this. This is where it gets a little foggy. <laughs> he was talking about his organizational system that he has, and. He has assignments, notes, handouts, and stories. And he has, it sounded like four notebooks set up that he shares with the students. And these are the notebooks. Um, and each unit will have a set of notebooks for the students that goes with it. So they'll kind of like switch one group out and switch the other group in. Um, and assignments just contains all of the assignments that they have to do. They're not working on school year or anything. They're running the whole class out of Evernote. Um, and I'll talk a minute, a little bit later, about Schoology Connection. Notes could be a pen cast he makes. It could be his PowerPoint notes anything like that as he creates. Basically the assignments he has set at the beginning of the semester, boom, these are assignments for the semester. I shared them with you. He doesn't go back to that notebook at all. He doesn't add things to that notebook. It just, it's where everything is. Um, the notes, that's what he adds. If he needs to add more information, if he has something that they did in class that he's saving, he'll store it in that notes section. Um, handouts, anything they're using on a daily basis is in that handouts file. Um, so the kids know, just like uh, Ms. Hennings has her file folders right at the door or her you know, paper trays right at the door, the kids know where everything is. Keep in mind, this is in a one-to-one -one environment. They all walk in, they're working on iPads. It sounds like they leave the iPad in the class. They can take their Evernote account home with them, though. So I guess that works. Um, and in a lot of ways, it can be helpful to use that kind of as a paradigm for thinking about how can this be useful. Um, and then stories is where he would put like YouTube files or web clipper clips or you know scenes from movies or other things that related to or supported what was going on. Um, I said I was going to talk a little bit about Schoology time. One of the really nice things, it's a very meaningful document over here, one of the really nice things about Evernote is what Evernote is is a cloud. Right, this is, they talk about cloud computing. Evernote is a branded cloud. Now, that means that you can have your space in the cloud here. You know, you've got your little one gigabyte a month or whatever it is slice of the cloud. And the kids have their slice of the cloud. So already one of the biggest problems we ever have with connectivity in our students is solved because we're in the same digital space when the neither of us can get to physically. 
Um, you know, so often we're sitting there with one computer and looking at the other going, okay, we're almost there, how do we do this? Or one computer, the printer, no, we're all in the cloud. We can get to the cloud and we can share from that. So there's a number of different ways that sharing works. One is I take my notebook or my note and I just tag all of the individual students that I want to be able to see this thing. And that set, keeps this set as private so people can't come and steal my stuff unless I know them and trust them and have said, here, come play with my stuff. Um, the other way is that you take your file, your note, and you export it to a URL, or you export that file's URL. Because this is in the cloud, it's already online. And all of these have a corresponding URL. Evernote must have billions of them. And when you export it, you'll be like, oh my god, because it's 80 characters long. Don't be afraid to dump it into a URL shortener before you paste it into the Schoology, because if you shorten it first, they'll get there more reliably. Otherwise, they're going to drop it off when it does the carriage return. So this URL often needs to be shortened. So you use like tiny URL? URL? Yeah, tiny URL, or I use the Google URL shortener. I just do a URL short uh, in Google search, and it calls up you know, the first one, which is sponsored by Google. And if you like, click into the details, it'll show you every URL I've ever shortened and how many people have clicked on it, which is like cool. And I don't get that necessarily a tiny URL. So, you know, I love our robot overlords, and you know, they give me data. Yeah. Um, can you say again? Once you have so you export the files, URL, shorten the URL. What's the so you shorten the URL, and then on your Schoology assignments, yeah, there's like a link. Spot. Oh, so instead of post file, you do post instead link. of post file, you do post link, and and watch this. I've got um, let's see. go to notebooks. I've got the English notes, and um, here we go. Evidence collection sheet. So this note. Evidence Collection Sheets actually has three attachments. I thought it had four. One of them looks, seems to have failed. Um, so when I go to share that, I can say copy share URL to clipboard. And it very excitingly tells me that it copied. And then I can paste that in there. And there's my all of the files on one web page. So it's easier than uploading each individual file to Schoology, especially if occasionally Schoology, the, the flash doesn't do it right, and you end up forgetting that you're waiting for it to upload, which happens to me more often than I'd like to admit. Yes? At that point, have you lost the privacy filter because? Right, this is a public thing. And nobody can do anything to these documents. Except look at them. Except look at them. Open them up, look at them, do what they will, but they're not going to change on here. Okay. Now, that shared notebook, you know, any one of those kids, you, there's different levels of permissions. And I've got mine all set to modify and invite, which is the most open. And I've done that because I assumed I was going to miss some kids on the first round through. And that would allow them, if one of them says, I can't get into the folder, the other one could actually invite them. Um, but it does mean that they could actually delete everyone's notes. <laughs> could that be problematic, Dr. It, Patterson? It certainly could be problematic. Um, if you, you know, if you don't want them to be able to modify each other's notes, then you can just invite them to look. Um, but I'm not sure, what I don't yet know, is if they don't have the right to modify, can they add notes to the file? I doubt it. And I wanted them to be able to add notes to the file, so I had to set the permissions open. But just as he's using different notebooks for assignments and notes and this kind of stuff, those notebook firewalls allow you to have radically different permissions. And then send it out to your class Facebook page or your LinkedIn account, for example. Um, yeah. The emailing the note could also be useful at times, but it basically just email, you know, opens up an email window and dumps that same URL into it. Um, I 
with sharing. Talk a little bit about tagging unless you have questions. The organizational scheme in Evernote has two main steps. There's the notebook level and there's the tag level. And the people I've talked to say if you, if you get too many notebooks, it's a big pain in the butt. So the idea is to keep the notebooks big and broad. And to keep the tags specific. So like I might have a notebook that is English, right? And my tags could include English 9, it could include AP Lang, um, so like there's a grade level tag. There would be kind of a, a text tag, what text I was using. There would be a assignment type tag. So if I could be like, you know what I need to find is all of my puppet shows. Then, ah, puppet shows, excellent. Ready to put together the puppet show blog post. Put them together as a uh, note and then export them to um, but that becomes pretty simple now what's compelling to me is that since you have this shared cloud space you can interact with the students work in the shared cloud space you cannot annotate the live scribe pen documents with an audio file, which is a little obnoxious to me. But because they were made in LiveScribe, you can't annotate those files. But if they email you any other type of file, or rather share it with you over Evernote, you can actually open up that note as long as you've got permissions to modify. And you can actually drop an audio response onto that. That could be anything from, wow, thanks, got it to, okay, this is really good, but let's take a look and read through what you have here. And then you read it through it to them, just as though you were in a meeting with them. Um, and I'm excited about that, because I often find that, especially, well, I don't know if it's especially, but I find that when teaching writing, kids have a lot of ego involved, and they learn most quickly when they know that you like them. And sometimes you have to tell them that you like them and their writing is horrible at the same time. And it's really, really, really tricky. Um, and I hate doing it in writing. I might get to the point where I could do it using audio because I've got a lot of control over that tone. But, you know, even then it's a little tricky. Might have to roll out the video on the finger puppets. Oh, I've got these finger puppets? Never mind. Handmade Guatemalan boutique finger puppets. It's sad. Um, so, talk about notebooks, talk about tagging, talk about sharing. Questions? Yes? Is there a way to pre populate a list of tags and then just click on them? Once you put it in there, it's in there. Okay. So, yes, by writing them all out, you can pre populate them. Um, but do they have to be associated with a document? Like, would you have to create a dummy document and tag it with everything? Does that make no. Sense? You okay. can click on this tags note. Oh, cool. And you can click new tag. Mm -hmm. And you can just type in the new tag there. So like, you know, there's one note on book 22, there's something about the Apple Store. This was a cool service that doesn't work anymore called If This Then That, which would allow you to, if you favorited something on Twitter, it would then automatically send it to your Evernote account, which is incredibly useful, but they stopped that, so. But you can, if you've got neat stuff on Twitter, they, there is a way to get Evernote to pick that stuff up, you just send it to it with like a four letter address. If you're interested in that, I can tell you more about it later. But yeah, so you can see that I've got, like moleskin is a tag that it has nothing associated with, as is Sam West. How about that? Um, how to be with cats. So, yeah, I want to know that Yeah, one. me too. Can you mm -hmm. click on how to be with cats? Jen and I are curious. Oh yeah, yeah, how to be with cats is was from the Yamamada last year. And oh. Nice. I had, you know, I do Photos some of our kids. I do some animal rescue work myself, and this was really interesting to me. So I wanted to make sure I had this information. So this is the um, 
Awesome. This was the woman who was helping us out. That's her kitty cat. That she's a really well-behaved demo cat, right? <laughs> and then this is the handout they have. I just took a picture of it with the uh, with the iPad that talks about you know how to greet a cat and you know don't let the cats out of the habitat. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't start petting unless the cat solicits attention from you. These are really rules for life, right? Um, talks about how to do play therapy. And then this was the, this is her talking about like what to do. The setup isn't ideal, the room's big, and the mic's not close enough to her. So when you press on a tag, you get the whole list of the related notes exactly. to the left. Exactly. So like if so I were to click on tap there. Like Odyssey um, Notes has four. Which one? Odyssey Notes. Odyssey Notes. That's our two and oh, right? There we go. Usually. So then here's these four Odyssey Notes things, right? Including the model paragraph that's color coded. And then let's say, I'm like, you know what? There are other Odyssey Notes than that. I know there are. I put them in there. I'm bad at tagging, so I have to search. Search. Ten notes now. Yeah. So here we've got these four that are tagged, and then there's these which were not tagged, including this one, which is handwritten. And it found this as the Odyssey. So did it find that? That's Odyssey. And so what would you do to tag it? I'm sorry, maybe that's Yeah. See, you can. Thanks to this uh, here, maybe I can. There we go. So yeah, it found that wow. for Odyssey. Now, if I wanted to tag this right now, I could click, oh. nope, I could click I think here. you have to open it. Oh, And then I've added Odyssey notes. Nice. And you can give it multiple tags? Yep. Cool. Tag an Odyssey essay, I can tag it bad handwriting. <laughs> So that's you know the main thing of it. The real the real um, value in this again is kind of exploring what it means to have more common space with the kids. So um, as you, I encourage you to play with it. If you're working with your pens at all, they're uploading to this, um, which should make it somewhat useful. Um, and I have what I'd like to do here at the end, we'll drop the cameras down, and I'll um, add you all to this notebook, and then you can have access to the list of the freshmen. So there'll be at least that, and you won't have to go through all of that work again. <laughs>